Hello friends, welcome to Environmental Science, Unit 2 Ecosystems. Under Ecosystems, in this video we are going to see the energy flow in the ecosystem, ecological succession, food chains, food webs and ecological pyramids. Energy flow in the ecosystem. Every ecosystem has several interrelated mechanisms that affect human life. So these are the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the oxygen cycle, a nitrogen cycle and the energy cycle. Every ecosystem is controlled by these biogeochemical cycles. Next, the water cycle. When it rains, the water runs on the ground and then flows into the rivers and then into the sea. During this process, some part of the water is stored underground. The water is drawn up from the ground by the plants along with the nutrients from the soil. By the process of transpiration and evaporation, water goes to the atmosphere and returns to the ground as rain, in the form of rain. Here, human life depends on this endless cycle. Human activities are making drastic changes in the atmosphere through the pollution, which is the, uh, often altering rainfall patterns. So this is leading to a uh, prolonged drought periods. Next, the carbon cycle. Carbon is a building block of both plant and animal tissues. In the atmosphere, carbon occurs as carbon dioxide. In the presence of sunlight, plants take up the carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process by which plants manufacture their own food. And by photosynthesis, the plants form carbohydrates that contain carbon. So plants use this complex mechanism, that is the photosynthesis, for their growth and development. In this process, plants release the oxygen into the atmosphere on which we, the men and animals, depend for their respiration. So plants therefore help in regulating and monitoring the percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere. All of the mankind thus depends on the oxygen generated through this cycle. Carbon cycle also keeps the carbon dioxide at the acceptable levels in the atmosphere. Here, plants and animals return their carbon by means of the process respiration, excretion and death. So by means of respiration, excretion and death, plants return the carbon which they accumulate from the uh, accumulated from the environment to the atmosphere. So, so all these process complete the carbon cycle. Next, the oxygen cycle. Oxygen is taken up by plants and animals from the air during respiration. The plants return oxygen to the atmosphere during photosynthesis. So during photosynthesis, plants take up carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So this links the oxygen cycle to the carbon cycle. Deforestation by man is likely to gradually reduce the oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Thus, plant life plays an important role in our lives, in the human lives. But human beings are not aware of this process and they do not appreciate and try to protect the plants and trees. The nitrogen cycle. Carnivorous animals feed on the herbivorous animals. When animals defecate, this waste material is broken down by worms and insects, mostly by petals and ants. So these small soiled animals break the waste material into further smaller bits on which the microscopic bacteria and fungi can act upon. This material is uh, thus broken down further into nutrients that plants can absorb and use for their growth. Thus, the nutrients are recycled back from animals to the plants. Similarly, the dead bodies of animals are also broken down into nutrients that are used by the plants for their growth. Thus, the nitrogen cycle is completed. The energy cycle. Here, the energy cycle is based on the flow of energy through the ecosystem. 
energy from the sunlight is converted by plants themselves into the growing new plant materials like leaves flowers fruits branches trunks and roots of plants so these are the products which are uh, manufactured by plants with the help of sunlight here the plants are eaten by herbivorous animals and the herbivorous animals are eaten by the carnivorous animals so this is a natural process occurring in the environment so on death of these herbivores and carnivores the energy is returned to the soil as nutrients to the plants integration of the cycles in nature so the above cycles are a part of the global life processes these biogeochemical cycles have a specific features in each of the ecosystems these cycles are also linked to the adjacent ecosystems the characteristics of the ecosystems are specific to the plant and animal communities in the particular region this is related to the geographical features of the area climate and the chemical composition of the soil of that particular area further the cycles are responsible for maintaining the life on earth if the mankind disturbs these cycles beyond certain limits they will eventually break down and lead to a degraded earth on which man will not be able to survive and next let us see the ecological succession ecological succession is a progressive changes in the species that make up or build up the community over a period of time a succession can be related to a, a seasonal and environmental changes uh, let us um, see for example uh, ecological succession happening in an open area an open area will gradually be converted into a grassland first and then the grassland will be converted into a shrubland and the shrubland will become a woodland and finally the woodland will be converted into a forest if uh, all these things are not disturbed by the human being thus the successional events may take much longer periods of time extending to several decades to form a succession and thus the end of ecological succession may produce a more or less stable stage that is called as the climax stage and this is known as the ecological succession next one food chain the transfer of energy from the plants through a series of organisms by eating and being eaten is known as food chain here in this food chain at each uh, transfer a large proportion or a large amount of energy is lost in the form of heat next let us see food chain um, for example in the terrestrial ecosystem let us see uh, the terrestrial ecosystem as an example for uh, food chain here the first food chain uh, let me uh, come from the reverse for uh, easy understanding here in this uh, first type of uh, food chain eagle uh, eats snake and snake eats frog frog eats grasshopper and grasshopper eats grass okay now i come from the on the first order here uh, grass is the producer so it uh, grass produces food and the grasshopper consumes the grass hence it is called as the consumer because grasshopper consumes the grass and uh, it is also known as herbivore so all those animals which eats plants are known as herbivores so hence grasshopper eats plant it is called as herbivore and then frog eats the grasshopper so our frog consumes the grasshopper hence a frog is also a consumer and it is also known as carnivore because it eats animals so the plant eaters are known as herbivores and animal eaters are known as carnivores so here frog is a carnivore and now snake snake eats frog so it is a consumer and also a carnivore and eagle or vultures eat snakes so they are consumers and also carnivores because they eat animals okay so this is uh, one uh, first uh, food chain then let us come to the second food chain here 
a grass is eaten by grasshopper and grasshopper is it is eaten by frogs and the frogs are eaten by owl and owls are eaten by eagles or vultures so this is second food chain here grass is producer grasshopper is a consumer frog is a consumer owl is a consumer eagle and vulture is also a consumer one next one the third one is uh, a grass is eaten by grasshopper and grasshopper is eaten by birds and birds are eaten by snakes and snakes are eaten by eagle or vulture so this is one uh, type of uh, um, food chain and uh, fourth one is here uh, grass grass is eaten by rabbit and rabbits are eaten by eagle or vulture so this is the fourth type of food chain so this kind of uh, uh, food chains are occurring in the environment and then in a uh, food chain energy is passed from one living organism to another so energy is passed from one stage to another that is one organism to another so when the herbivorous animals or uh, animals feed on plants the energy is transferred from uh, plants to animals or herbivores to carnivores and next one is food web here in this uh, picture uh, there are many food chains uh, we can see uh, the first one a uh, grass grass is eaten by rabbit rabbit or uh, rabbits are eaten by fox this is one food chain the second food chain uh, a rabbit eats grass and uh, rabbits are eaten by the eagle is another food chain and here uh, the um, rabbit mouse mouse eats grass and the mouse is eaten by owl this is one food chain and the mouse eats grass and the mouse is eaten by uh, the vulture or eagle another food chain and here the grass is eaten by grasshopper and the grasshoppers are eaten by birds and birds are eaten by snakes is one food chain and another food chain grass is eaten by grasshopper grasshoppers are eaten by frog and the frogs are eaten by snakes and also frogs are eaten by owl so um, several food chains are in this um, picture and these food chains are interrelated how interrelated means here see here the rabbit is eaten by fox and also uh, at the same time the rabbit is also eaten by the vulture and here the frog is eaten by owl and also the frogs may be eaten by snakes so likewise in a uh, ecosystem uh, hence uh, though there are many food chains the food chains are interrelated or interlinked so this interlinkage of food chain in an ecosystem is known as food web the food chains are not isolated sequences as we have seen already uh, but the food chains are interconnected with each other presence of more than one food chain interconnected in an ecosystem is known as the food web here each step of the food web is called as a trophic level or energy level hence green plants occupy the first level herbivores occupy the second level carnivores are um, occupy the uh, third level and the secondary carnivores occupy the fourth level or the topmost level here the green plants are uh, known as the producers and herbivores are known as the kind of primary consumers and the um, carnivores are called as secondary consumers and the secondary carnivores are called as the tertiary consumers the importance of food web here uh, these uh, tropic levels uh, together form the ecological pyramid and when the life in the food web are disturbed or uh, disrupted due to human activities it will lead to the loss or extinction of species and then finally the web will break down when the web break down breaks down the ecosystem will also be affected for example let us see uh, in an ecosystem when the snakes are killed by human being the rats will increase and cause heavy damage to the crops because snakes eat rats when the uh, number of snakes are reduced the amount of rats will be increased so and that uh, happens here yeah, imbalance in the ecosystem and another example the application of insecticides so 
uh, the appletion of insecticides not only kills the insects but it also kills the birds which eat the crops and insects and when the birds are killed insects will also increase and damage the crops and not only that um, and due to the killing of birds the pollination and the seed dispersal will also be affected because birds are um, uh, making a main role uh, playing a main role in pollination and seed dispersal ecological permits are food permits so in this permit producers occupy the base level or the first level then as a primary consumers occupy the second level the secondary consumers occupy the third level and tertiary consumers occupy the fourth level uh, generally in all ecosystems or in uh, an ecological pyramid the producers um, the amount of producers will be large and the amount of tertiary consumers will be small under ecological pyramid uh, let us take the terrestrial ecosystem uh, as an example in an ecosystem the producers that is the green plants utilize the uh, energy directly from the sunlight and convert it into the matter that is the leaf fruit stem and root etc a large number of producers form the most basic or the first tropic level uh, in the food pyramid and the primary consumers the primary consumers are the herbivorous animals that eat the plants or at the second tropic level and then the secondary consumers the secondary consumers are the carnivores that feed on the primary consumers which form the third tropic level only a few animals form the third tropic level a fourth one is the tertiary consumers very few carnivores at the apex of the food pyramid forms the fourth level for example the lion tiger and eagles are at the apex level in an ecosystem this structure is known as the ecological pyramid so uh, this is how the energy is used by living creatures and flows through the ecosystem from its base to the apex so um, here much of the energy is used up, used up in the activities of each living organisms here another example for the ecological pyramid let us take the aquatic ecosystem as an example in an aquatic um, food pyramid or aquatic uh, ecosystem uh, like a pond or lake the planktons that is the free floating organisms are found on the surface of the water and the microscopic organisms are the producers at the first level or base level then the fishes are the primary consumers which are uh, from which forms the second level and man will be the secondary consumer at the third level or the top level uh, in an aquatic ecosystem under ecosystems in this video we have seen the energy flow in the ecosystem ecological succession food chains food waves and ecological premises thank you